Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Mommy, you can't close that suitcase by yourself. Why not? Because you'll hurt yourself. Push over. I don't want to push over. Push over, I said. Don't bully me. I will bully you all I want. My time for bullying you is very short. Push over. Hope you don't treat your husband this way. Well, he's bigger than I am. Now, I will close this suitcase and then... Hey, what have you got in it? Rocks. Wouldn't put it past you. Just a few Eastbrook rocks to remember you by when I'm far, far away. I think you have a little bolder. Living with you six months, anyone would get a little bolder. Oh, huh? I oh, made a pun. Oh, oh, nothing to be so proud of. How are you doing with that suitcase? I think it's broken, Mama. It isn't broken. It's a perfectly brand new suitcase. I used it when I came and I used it when I leave. It's as good as new. But it won't close. You know, I think they make suitcases not quite deep enough these days. Well, you're just going to have to call David or you'll miss the train, Mama. Here, let me. I'll do it. I can manage for myself, thank you. Can you, Mama? Can I what? Manage for yourself. Of course I can. What a ridiculous question. Well, you haven't been by yourself so much. It'll be a welcome relief. Ouch! What's the matter? Show me, Mama. Oh, pinched my finger. Get away. Is it bleeding? None of your business. I won't have you leaving us with an arm in a sling. People will talk. Next thing I know, it'll be in all the papers that David Norton threw his poor old mother-in-law out and broke her arm. It's my finger. That's Leave my finger alone. Since when are you so independent? Since always. Only you've never given me much of a chance to show my independence You'll off. You'll get your chance now. I I hope you like it, Mama. Oh, I'll love it. A few quiet days in New York by myself and on to Aunt Louisa's I in Long Island. can't for the life of me see what's so much better about staying with a 68-year-old woman who has allergies than staying with us. You are speaking of my one and only sister-in-law, of whom I'm very fond. Use a little respect, please. Well, respect or no, Aunt Louisa has allergies. It's nothing to make fun of. When you're 68, you may have allergies, too. Never. We'll see. Having allergies is a special type. I'll have David instead. Oh, how's your finger? It has just fallen off. Oh. Now, are you satisfied? Mm, very. Well, we're all set to go. We are very helpless females, David. We are not. You can't close Mama's suitcase. It's probably too full to close. That's impossible. Everything fitted in it when I came. Well, that was six months ago. Maybe your things have grown since, Mama. Or maybe she's running off with the family silver. <gasps> Hadn't thought of that. Mm-hmm. Count your spoons. No, no, but I will right away. She turns her back. And some guests like to take towels and soap as mementos. Oh, no, 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 no. Mama wouldn't take a towel or a soap. She's not that kind of woman. Are you casting aspersions? I don't know. Am I? I don't mind being accused of stealing your silver and your towels and your soap, but I do mind being accused of not being interested in towels and soap. She's very sensitive, David. Mm-hmm. All evicted house guests are. Yes. I wish you'd hurry and evict me and close that suitcase, David. She's pretending she's in a hurry to leave. Think what you will, but I can't wait to get out of this madhouse. Listen to her, will you? How I stood it this long, I'll never know. Oh, you won't, eh? If it weren't for that adorable son of yours, and heaven only knows how you two gave birth to such a sweet child. If it weren't for him, I'd have left weeks, nay, months ago. Oh, you bet you would. We wouldn't have had to have you around to take care of him. David, please hurry and close that suitcase. Mama's getting impatient all over again. I think she's got the baby hidden in here. <laughs> you did it! There. Oh, you great big strong man. Don't I get a kiss? Well, since you asked so nicely... Hello, darling. Hold me, David. I'm the one who's leaving, Claudia, not David. Goodbye, Mama. Loving daughter, isn't she, David? Mm Mm-hmm. Mama, now, you'll be so kind as to eat properly, and after all, you're on your own now. There's not going to be anybody standing over you, protecting you the way I have these last few months. Thank goodness for that. It's three meals a day, Mama, and no forgetting one of them. I am not so old that I have reached absent-mindedness. David, she can't even take a little bit of loving advice with good grace. That's what happens when a mother-in-law gets let off to live on her own. Oh, I guess it has to be expected. No, I haven't left a thing in this closet. Let me see now. Not a shoe, not a blouse, not a scarf. Well, it's empty all right, David. Empty as the old lady who looked in her cupboard. A row of hangers hanging side by side. Hey, what are you doing in that closet? I'm just 
pounding the hangers to make sure Mama hasn't packed any of them away. Well, if she has, we'll let her think we didn't notice. What a generous son-in-law my daughter married. Why, Mama? Don't tell me you're still here. Unfortunately. I just want you to notice that I haven't left a thing in any of my dresser drawers either. If there's anything I hate after a guest leaves, it's rushing to the post office and mailing little bundles of forgotten things. Well, you won't have any of that trouble with me. I wouldn't leave you an old three-cent stamp. Hear the way she talks to me, David. About time she left. She's starting to be too familiar. Yes, well, that's always what happens when you give roof to a person. And I've cleaned out my medicine cabinet, too. I'm not going to leave you cause for chattering criticisms behind my back. Cleaned out medicine cabinet or not, Mama, we'll find a few criticisms to chatter. Never fear. Not even a hairpin. And I just closed the window in the bedroom. Good, then we can lock the door of your room, Mama, and not have to open it. The lovely smell of camphor and slip covers and be all nice and empty. No, we have only about five more minutes before we have to leave for the station. I'll most certainly be ready. Oh, David, you better start taking Mama's bag down, or do you want Fritz to do it? No, Fritz is up at the barn. It'll be a great pleasure to take Mama's things down. Well, there's nothing like leaving a place and feeling your hosts are jubilant to see you go. Oh, I knew I forgot something. You see, David? It begins. It's my silver symbol. I think I left it in the baby's room. Silver thimble was neatly put away in the pocket of her suitcase, David. I, I saw her put it there myself. Well, she, she probably wants to say goodbye to the baby. You won't disturb her. It's funny how the room's so empty already, as if nobody'd ever lived here. David, you're, you're very sweet to take the later train so Mama can go with you. Well, it's nice to have company. From Mama. Oh, David. Did I ever tell you, Mrs. Norton, that I love you very much? Well, tell me now, quickly. Always hanging on each other's necks. I don't for the life of me see what's so wonderful about hanging on each other's necks. You're not supposed to. Did you find your thimble? Yes, it was on the baby's dresser. I just threw it in my pocketbook. David, you haven't brought those suitcases down yet. Nag, 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 nag. I'm taking them down now. I bet you'll be happy when she's gone, David. To tell you the truth, I can't wait. <laughs> well, there's no reason for us staying up here any longer. Why don't we go down, too? Well, I have no objections. I'll put out the light. Oh, yes, we certainly don't want to waste electricity on a little woman who isn't there. My, it's a dark day without the lights, isn't it? It's a very nice room, Claudia. I liked it very much. Well, at last I found you liked something. And, Mama, if you ever want to come and stay in the room again, we might just consider it, and I just might be able to talk David into letting you come. Well, now I'll close the door, and you're as good as left. I do hope I haven't forgotten anything. It's so messy to forget things. You promised you hadn't, now. Well, you never know. I want to go in the kitchen and say goodbye to Bertha before I leave. Oh, yes, you better... Fritz and Bertha are going to miss you. I'll miss them. Well, it's nice to know you'll miss somebody. I miss those who managed to miss me. Tip for tat. I'll only take a second. I don't want David to miss his train after being late already. David wouldn't miss his train, not even for you, Mama. Well, car's all ready. Where's Mama? She's gone into the kitchen to say goodbye to Bertha. Where's your coat? What for? Well, it's cold out. Not letting you out without it on. Oh, well... I'm not coming with you, David. What? Well, I think it's just silly for me to rush down to the train and stand around waving goodbye and watching the train pull out. Afterwards, listening to the whistle and the distance, it's, it, it's silly nonsense, that's all. I think I'll stay home with the baby. Mm-hmm. Just as you like. And after all, well, what's five more minutes or less with a person? It's silly. You're a big girl now. You know that? Yeah, I'm not so very big a girl. Not not so very big at all. You're just right for me. Up to my chin. Darling, not again. Not again what? Now I can understand why you're in such a hurry to get rid of me and why I'm in such a hurry to go. You certainly make a person feel as if a person is intruding. But that's our whole point, Mama. So you won't feel badly about leaving us. Who said anything about feeling bad? Well, certainly a person with any decent feeling would feel bad. There's not a decent feeling in my whole body. Not in mine either. You're 
Your hat sounds crooked, Mrs. Brown. I like it that way. Stubborn, willful, and independent. I am all those things. Well, just for that, I'm not coming down to the station to say goodbye. That's a relief. If there's anything I hate, it's goodbyes at the station. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to bother to say goodbye to you at all. My intention, exactly. Coming, David? I'm ready. And what am I waiting for? Ma- Mama. What is it now? Um, David's awfully nice about accepting collect calls. That's good. If anybody wants to call you, I'll tell them. And we're usually home for dinner and breakfast. Good appetite to you. Give the baby a kiss for me and don't tell him bad stories about his grandmother. It won't be easy, but I'll try. Well, there goes a pretty wonderful woman. Speaking as her daughter, she's not bad. You ought to know. I do. Speaking as your husband, you're not bad either. Oh, David, if it weren't for you, I just couldn't have let her go. You two girls certainly put up a good performance for each other. Insults, devil may care. That's our system. You, uh, you don't think you're fooling each other, do you? We don't mean to. You don't think you fool me either, do you? I guess we wouldn't fool a stranger. Then what's the point? Why don't you just let go, darling? It it might be easier. Well, we we just never have, David. I just couldn't with Mama. Well, she's waiting, David. Better go. Mm-hmm. She wants to go, darling. I know, because... It's fair to you. And to you. I'll be home early. Well, that's all right. Goodbye, Mrs. Norton. David, tell Mama to put her rubbers on when it rains. When you lunch alone, you're not likely to whip up a complicated recipe. But you can add a refreshing touch to your noonday meal any day of the week simply by going to the refrigerator and getting a bottle of delicious, sparkling Coca-Cola. When Coke's on the menu, you lunch refreshed. Hey, Joe, you want to say goodbye to Mrs. Brown? This is your last chance, because uh, I think the train will be coming in pretty soon. Well, David, I certainly am glad you mentioned it. I do want to say goodbye to Mrs. Brown. Why, she's one of my favorite people. And one of mine, too, and you have very good taste, Joe. I'm afraid the good taste is also a virtue of yours, David. Thank you. Now, if you like, I'll run over to your house this afternoon and spend some time with Claudia. Now, that'd be swell. She's, uh, she's going to be kind of lonesome at first, Joe. Yeah. If I were Claudia and felt the way about her mother... The way she does, why, I'd be lonesome, too. Well, I better go put Mama's bags on the train. You coming over, Joe? I'll be right over to kiss Mama goodbye as soon as I say that every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, When you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.